Hello, thank you for watching this video on modified bin packing plus a little bit of a swapping algorithm. My name is Corey Messer. I'm a student here at Liberty University studying industrial and systems engineering. This video kind of is a summary of a class project that I had in Engineering 460. Now let's talk about the problem a little bit. So we're given 100 boxes with a random size and volume and weight. We need to create a list of the boxes for each pallet that needs to be stacked and shipped. Um, and these uh, pallets are going to be put into a container. Now the order of the boxes will be first in, first out of the shipping container. And there is this idea of a priority where the first items um, that go into the container will be the very last items that will be pulled out or so the last items used um, when the container is opened and the, the contents of the container is used for a project. Now you can think of the pallets just as bins if you're talking about bin packing problems and so each bin or pallet can only have a certain amount of items, a certain volume and then it can only have a certain amount of weight so those are two main constraints. Now each item they have different weights, different volumes and then also again this idea of priority. There are multiple pallets, therefore every item is on a pallet, that's misspelled, and all the boxes will fit into a container. Now, um, once all of the items have been assigned to a pallet, the swapping algorithm will take place and balance the volume between the different um, pallets. That way the um, stacking algorithm will have similar, um, like total stacking, the, the pallets will be stacked similar heights. To the right, it's a little bit of a cost function, um, mathematical model, just talking about the sum from one to n pallets and also from j to k boxes where you're just summing and adding all those up. Now there's a weight constraint and also a, um, a capacity constraint for both the pallets and the containers. A little bit of pseudocode, then also a diagram to kind of just give an example or you know just another a representation of my pr problem. You have the hundred boxes, you're creating individual lists for each pallet, and then there's a somewhat of a stacking algorithm that shows how to stack these pallets, and then they'll load it into a shipping container. Here's a flowchart of the uh, grouping and then also the swapping algorithm. So you start and you input the data and you sort the data by priority. It's really key. And then you add the data to the bins or also the pallets. And then the code goes into a question, is the bin filled to maximum capacity? If it's uh, not filled, then it goes back and adds more uh, data entries or more boxes to the pallet. If it is filled, then it will move to the next bin and it will continue this process until all of the um, boxes or data entries have been assigned to a pallet. Now, once it finishes that, it goes into the swapping algorithm and it asks the question, has each bin um, been swapped on entry and so if each bin hasn't been swapped and balanced then it will start the swapping process and it will determine if the current bin or the next bin is larger so that will be looking at pallet one or bin number one and then pallet two and it will determine which of these is larger and then it will find the difference in the size and it will swap a box from the larger pallet and give it to the smaller pallet to balance out that weight once it does this with all the pallets, it will produce some documentation and then it ends the code. Before we get to conclusions and lessons learned, I'll go ahead and run um, my MATLAB and then if we have time, I'll show you in Excel where I worked with some other code and did the 3D stacking. Now to go over the code uh, just a little bit, right off the bat we can have our um, random data and in MATLAB I'm just using the priority is a key, so priority one is going to be the lowest uh, priority box. Therefore, it's going to be the box that gets loaded into the shipping container first, and then it will be the last box used on the project when the container is unloaded. And then in the center is weight, and also the volume in cubic inches. Um, talking about priority, just one more time, box 100 will be the very last box that will be loaded into the shipping container, so it should be on um, the very last pallet and it'll be the very first box 
um, or the very first pallet that's pulled out of the container and used to start the project. So I don't want any of these boxes with priorities 80 and 90s to be on pallet 1, 2, etc. That's why it's important to sort the data first by the pallet uh, priority, by the box priority. So here um, I'm just declaring just your my constraints with the summer volume um, that will be used to compare and to add the volume of each pallet as it's going through the iterations. Um, this first for loop goes through and is really just taking the boxes out of the data uh, list and it's adding it to each pallet. And so it checks to see is the sum of volume one less than or equal to the max volume that I have set for each pallet. If it is, then add the first or the iteration of the data entry to the pallet, sum it up, and then do that again. And once the first volume hits the max volume, then it breaks and it goes to the second pallet, to the third pallet, fourth pallet, however many pallets I want to have for the data entries. So this continues until every single uh, item in the data um, entry in the data uh, selection is applied to or stacked on a pallet. So then the swapping algorithm starts next and it will look and say is the sum of volume 1 greater than the sum of volume 2? So is pallet 1 bigger essentially than pallet 2? If it is then it will take the difference and then also have a little flag here that says if it's within 1% the difference then don't do the swapping uh, algorithm, there's really no need to. Um, I declare it as like 1% would be um, sufficient. Um, but if it's not within 1%, go ahead and take half of the difference. So find a box that's a little under half of the difference to give to the smaller pallet. And that's what the code um, in this if statement does. And then at the end, it will sum the volumes again and sum, um, the sum the volumes between both pallets. And then it will get report on the new difference and um, break after that and go to the next pallet. Now, if some of the second pallet was bigger than the first pallet, it would run through the same sequence, but it would take a box from pallet two and give it to pallet one. And the same process is applied to pallet three and four. If pallet three is bigger than four, then it runs this section of code, but if pallet four is bigger than pallet three, it'll run this if statement. And then it continues um, for however many pallets I want it to be stacked. So we'll go ahead and run this code and I'll show you the documentation that I have um, outputted here in MATLAB. So we can see here that the difference between pallet 1 and 2 is a little under 6,000 cubic inches. So if found that pallet 1 is bigger than pallet 2, or it would have outputted the difference between pallet 2 and 1. So the difference between pallet 1 and 2 is around 3, almost 3.5%. Three and, and so because it's greater than 1%, it runs the swap algorithm. And it found, we need to find a box a little under 3,000 cubic inches to take from pallet 1 and give to pallet 2. And so it did not find a box on pallet 1 that size, so it broke and it went to the next two pallets. Now pallet 3 is bigger than pallet 4 and it's at 0.38% so it's under 1% so it uh, moved on to the next pallet. And then pallet 5 is bigger than pallet 6, a difference of 2.1%. So um, we need to find a box around 1800 cubic inches and it looks like it found one box, uh, priority number 73, and it swapped that with a empty slot in pallet 6 and we can see here where the swap, swap took place. It took this pallet, this box from pallet 5 and it gave it to pallet 6 right here. So the difference, if we scroll back up, went from 2.1% beneath 1% at 0.76 therefore meeting the constraints that I gave. So I think we have a little bit more time I can show you a similar process I wrote in uh, Excel using VBA. And so this will go ahead and sort all the um, data entries or all the boxes, applying them to all the pallets. I didn't use a swapping algorithm in VBA, which I could have added it, but it was for a different project. Once this 
um, goes through and it takes all the data entries and gives it to all the pallets. It breaks once it hits the max volume that I've set. Um, it'll clean it up and it'll give us a list of all the items that should be stacked on all the pallets based on the weight, um, volume, and then also the priority. Now what's really nice here, thanks for telling me it's finished. What's really nice here, um, out on the internet I found some uh, 3D stacking um, uh, VBA, VBA macro by a guy named Emery. I'll put his link in the description, that way you can check out his video, really good video. Um, he has 3D stacking and it determines uh, the location of the boxes and it does that by plotting in a three-dimensional cube which I think is very smart. So we'll go ahead and run this macro and we're going to plot on the XY rotation which means we'll spin the boxes. Uh, if we did four rotation it would mean we would flip the boxes and we don't want our contents to spill out. Now I'm using pallet sizes 48 by 40 which is GMA pallets. Those are just average pallets used, standard used in North America. We'll go ahead and run that and Emery's code will output this uh, three-dimensional uh, plotting onto a text file that then will get read by oops that'll get read by a script here in this uh, 3D emulator and so we can go ahead and we can run the script which is pulling the um, 3D plotting of the bins or of the pa of the boxes in the bins or pallets that I grouped together and so when we go ahead and execute this code, it'll show us what it would look like to stack uh, like my first palette with the boxes that I gave or that I told the program to choose. Now, um, you can see here, because I'm using random data, every box is a different size. It's all completely random, and this would be the best way to stack it, and you kind of have a representation of what it looks like. Now the same process can be applied for palette 1, palette 2, palette 3, and so forth. Now getting back here to the conclusions and lessons learned. After conducting this research and simulation, a new question kind of formed. Currently I am grouping the boxes from the entry data list um, to each palette around 70% to stay under the height constraint when it's stacked. Now, the new question is, what are some options available to increase that grouping volume and then also stay under the height constraint? So, I will be grouping the boxes closer to 80 or 90, 95% and still stay under the um, 98 inches height constraint of the container. And so, I was thinking about possibly a better stacking algorithm or easier move into homogeneous boxes or standard two, three, or five box type sizes. I think that would really make the stacking um, a lot better and it'll also give me a higher grouping volume and stay under the height constraint. Now some lessons I learned from this project, really working on writing code that is clean and flexible and I can, it can be used in multiple lines and achieve multiple goals and not be very long. And then also pseudocoding different um, ways to achieve the same result and then choosing the best uh, lines of code. Thank you for watching this video. Again, check out in the description um, a link to Emery's video and the work that he did with 3D Stacking using Excel.